Okay, welcome to this episode of the Athletic Fitness and Nutrition Podcast. My name is Paul Burgess, and I'm here today with a really interesting guy, as far as I'm concerned, because I came across him, and I, and I was trying to tell him before we start recording where I heard his name, and it was on a another podcast, and quite a, a big one, I would have thought, something like a Ben Greenfield or something. But basically, I'm with a guy called Mike Millen today, and when I saw his Instagram account, I had to almost I had to take a double look because this guy is 63 years old and he's swinging off monkey bars and doing all sorts of athletic feats, climbing mountains and all sorts, looks about 35 years old. And I just thought, you know what, I need to know what is going on. I want to know his secret and let's get him on the show. So Mike, welcome mate. How are you? I'm good. Thanks Paul. And thanks for your really kind introduction there. Uh, it's, it's very kind of you to say such uh, glowing things about me, and uh, it's nice to speak to you. Mate, pleasure. Um, so, tell us a bit about who you are and what mm-hmm. your, your kind of history has been, because I'm thinking at 63 years old, you should have quite a long history, right? Yeah, I've got a massive amount of history. <laughs> so, so st- st- start us from kind of the beginning, how you got into the kind of sport, the sporting aspect of life and, and kept yourself so fit. Yeah, um, like I said, when I went to school, there was uh, I went to school in inner London, so there was never many sporting opportunities. The school we we just played football as a kid, and that was it. We never had access to any green fields or athletic stadiums or anything like that in inner London. So it was just playing football in the playground, and I developed a passion for football, and that was it. That was the only sort of sport I'd done as a teenager in and into sort of um, my twenty fives and. 30 it was just football 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 and I was all consumed by it all and I loved everything about it football but looking back now I wish I had have had the opportunity to you know explore a lot more uh, sports like gymnastics and track and field athletics and everything I just would have had a bit loved to have sort of experienced that but being in inner London we never had the opportunity and it was just football so I had a great time playing football and then I got to about 27, 28, something like that, when playing a good standard that I did, semi-professional, it was, you know, I couldn't probably play to the same level as I wanted to. And I thought about, for a couple of years, just playing at a lower level. And it, I'd done that, and then it didn't really suit me, because playing at that slightly lower level, there wasn't that c- commitment, I didn't think, that I was wanted to put in to the game. So I could have carried on playing into my 40s, 50s. In fact, I could still run around on a football pitch now. But I don't want to because I don't feel that same commitment I want to put into a sport with the other team members. And being a team sport, football, as football is, I sort of thought, you know what, no, it's time for me to step out. But I always imagined, as a young man, um, I'd still be running around on a football field in my 50s. And I, like I said, I just had the passion for football, so... I decided to move away from football and then just look at the bigger picture. You know, what else can I be interested in? I just couldn't imagine on a Saturday afternoon not being involved in football. And when I stopped, Saturday afternoons was just like, whoa, what's going on? You know, there's no... On Saturday afternoon, it's football. Yeah. So it was a bit strange at first getting used to that, not playing football on a Saturday afternoon. And then I just thought I'd start... With my training for football, I'd sort of done quite a bit of running, obviously. And I enjoyed, always enjoyed the cardio stuff and running. So I got into sort of marathons. So I've done a few marathons. Uh, then got in, in, introduced to a gym. And it just sort of, Paul, was a natural progression. Just instead of looking like this at one sport, I started to sort of, wow, look at that. What about five I got that? What about five I got that? What about... So, it just seemed to develop as a natural passion for all sports. And did you find and, that that you took to anything that you turned your hand to pretty well? Or did you find that any of them were just too difficult to, to get progressively mm. good at? Because when we do things that we're, we find we're, yeah. we're good at, we tend to like it. Sure, but sure. When we do things that we're rubbish at, we tend to go, oh, yeah, that's rubbish. I don't want to do that. Sure, yeah. Um, the only things I've, I think I've probably tried maybe 10 or 15 years ago was golf. And I just felt, you know, I'm getting 50 or whatever, or I had a load of friends playing golf. I thought I'd give that a try. 
And Paul, that was just so boring to me. Not athletic so, enough. So boring. So <laughs> I could hit the ball okay. And I thought, you know, I booked up some lessons and I was doing okay. But I just thought, wow, no, no. It was like 10 seconds of action and then waiting for five or 10 minutes before you got another bit of constant uh, yeah. action. I so you, so you got, how, how did your marathon running come about? It was just, you just thought, yeah, I'm going to go and uh, run a marathon? Training, a love from running from training. And um, like I said, I would, when we were doing that training for the football, you know, I always enjoyed the running. There's quite a lot of running involved in training for the football. So that sort of appealed to me. And I started off with, um, I, th I think it was a half marathon. Maybe not even that. Maybe I think I, no, actually, I just went straight in for the London Marathon. So yeah, the London, like you do, right? <laughs> so the London Marathon was uh, up and coming. It, it started to grow then. Not, it was a less interest than it was uh, than it is now. So I just thought, oh, I'll have a go at that. So I signed up for it. Lucky enough, I got uh, through the ballot, I got in. And then I broke my leg in, in January. And I thought, wow, well, that's put scupper to that. So I well, broke my ankle, sorry. Um, that, yeah, that was playing football. That was before, I, that was why I was sort of to toying with the idea of giving up football. So I broke my ankle. So I thought, oh, well, that's put paid to that. So I was about six weeks, eight weeks in plaster. And the marathon being in April, I thought, well, am I going to be able to run the marathon because of the lack of training? Well, I'll give it a go. So I only had probably about six weeks training and I'll give it a go. And uh, that was it. So I'd done it and enjoyed it. I thought, well, perhaps I should have another go because I didn't get that full amount of training. I'll give it another go. So I had another go and yeah, I improved my time. I started to enjoy it. So I started to do uh, half marathons, marathons. So I've done five London marathons in the end and lots of sort of cross country runs and stuff like that. And then I started to develop a run, uh, an interest not so much in the street running, but from the uh, the cross country, getting muddy and stuff like that. And, and what going. was your what was your best time for the marathon? Uh, three hundred six. Yeah. See, right now everyone is hating you because not only did you just stand up and go and run a marathon without any training after breaking an ankle, but then you managed to get to almost a sub three three hour marathon at some point. <laughs> Mate, that's amazing. A very <laughs> phenomenal achievement. Thank you. Thank you. That's a, but. I don't know, and I've done all this training on my own. I didn't sort of follow any, uh, um, you know, plans or nothing like that. It was just what I worked out myself, talking to people. But I didn't sort of go in, on the internet looking for for plans. I just what my experience had brought me, and I just used that. So. So then you you moved on to a bit more cross country activity. Yeah, and then I thought, I, I mean, you look you feel really fit when you're doing the marathons, you know, and your your cardiovascular is amazing. But I started to lose a little bit too much weight. So I didn't necessarily look good. Mm. You know, you get that runner's look, which, it, yeah, you've, aerobically, you're really, really fit. So I started to go to the gym. Someone said, let's go to the gym. or whatever. Again, gyms weren't that popular then. They were just sort of expanding, big clubs and stuff like that. So I couldn't imagine myself standing in front of a mirror and doing bicep curls. I felt this is silly, but... You know, once I got into the gym, I just I saw there was lots of other opportunities to maybe look at uh, put a bit more weight on, and so I got introduced to the gym in that way, and then started to sort of find the things that I enjoyed, the exercises that I enjoyed doing at the gym. You know, chin chin ups and using my own body weight rather than just picking up the bicep, uh, the dumbbells and and bicep curling all day. That didn't but, and still doesn't appeal to me that much. So. That's probably how I got involved in in, in the um, body weight stuff, if you like, the yeah. calisthenics and stuff like that. So, so interestingly, uh, mm. interestingly, if if anyone watches the video of this, um, you'll see Mike, and he. I don't know. Do you do you even know what your body fat percentage is or anything like that? Do you, do you monitor any of that? I don't monitor it, but I, the, our people at the gym have sort of said, "Oh, in the past cup, yeah." Oh, let's measure your body fat, Mike, and it's it's probably about five or six, seven percent. Yeah, so. so it's definitely it's definitely well below ten percent, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, the, the the body shape and type that you have it now, were you always prone to look like that? So I know, obviously, if you're doing a lot of running, you're going to burn yeah. a lot of muscle off, and that's why people become skinny fat. If you know yeah. what I mean, they 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 burn yeah. off that muscle and keep the the fat on. 
But were you always kind of lean and um, that sort of percentage or, or was there a time where you changed something significant that gave you that, that look? No, I think there is some genetics involved in it. But uh, yeah, I was, uh, once I was doing concentrate on the running too much, I just didn't look very nice. You know, my, 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 you know your, your face is very drawn and stuff like that. So um, I think if I stopped training, I would probably lose weight, which is a little bit unusual okay. in most cases. So I do feel there's probably some genetics in there that so you would last. And as you get into your 60s, you know, you start to lose a bit of uh, muscle weight and, and muscle, don't you? So, and so, so now your favoured kind of workout or sport, if you like, is more the body weight, calisthenic kind of stuff um, that you're finding is you're, you're more than capable of still. Yes, yeah, and, and that's what I really enjoy. I really enjoy it. I, thought I don't do... Um, I've I played around a little bit with a, with a CrossFit, and that sort of doesn't appeal to me, pushing them great big heavy weights. Yeah. But, but to do... Uh, timed events so I'll set myself a little uh, gym circuit to do it and then I'll see how quick I can do it that sort of stuff but not necessarily too too much too biased towards the CrossFit okay. I do enjoy pushing my body weight around yes then calisthenic types of, of exercise and I feel really it's because you're sort of getting yourself in all different positions I'm, I'm not saying you can't get injured but I think the, the risk is slightly lower than if, than if you're just doing one type of movement and getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And I think in the end, your body will break down and you will suffer. not to say you're not going to get injured doing anything. Yeah. But I do believe, you know, moving around like in the way I do it, a lot with the exercises, I just think it strengthens the tendons and ligaments and, and, would, and the movements, I think, are good for your body as well, especially as you get older. Absolutely. And mobility is key, right? So there's, there's plenty of people in their 50s or 40s even that, are immobile, can't get out of a chair, you know, very, that, very tight backs, shoulders yeah, are screwed yeah. and everything else. Uh, that's why I enjoy this type of training that I'm doing. And like I said, I still enjoy the cardio side of it. So I don't run as much now. I'll probably run a couple of times a week, but it'll be half an hour, 40 minutes high intensity rather than eight and 10 miles, 13 miles. Although uh, I do uh, propose to do a half marathon in Barbados in uh, December. Just to keep your hand in. Just as, as a, a sort of <laughs> fun thing to do because I found out with a couple of friends of mine that it starts at 5 a.m. in the morning, which I find it, mm, that sounds quite an interesting okay. thing. So maybe we, I think we're going to go out there and do that. But So, so you'll be done by in, half eight? we are done, done time yeah, for breakfast? That, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I think I put, that appeals to me, that type of half man. Something different along the lines like that. When, when was the last time you ran uh, a, a significant distance? What do you mean by significant distance? Well, like a, a, a half marathon or a marathon? Um, I've, I haven't run a marathon for probably 10, 15 years, mate. Yeah, it's about 10, 12 years, something like that. But I don't know. Um, what did I do? Yeah, maybe in the last year I've done 12 miles or something like that. So, okay. So it's not yeah. something you're you're not used to. You can, you can still put yeah. it out when you need to. Yeah. I think once you're up to about 13 miles... You know, if you have a good general level of fitness, I think you can do it without straining too specifically. Yeah. If you talk about a marathon, then yeah, you've got to be very specific. Okay, and so you- a lot of people will sit here and listen to this going, well, that's all well and good. He's been naturally gifted sports-wise all his life. And he's always done, stuff, always done stuff he likes and all the rest of it. Mm-hmm. So it's easy for him. Yeah. So I would say, no, I'm, I've got no special talents whatsoever. None at all. I'm exactly the same as everyone else. All perhaps I have done is be consistent and varied with the training. You know, not be in one sport, uh, which I've d- done as a, uh, uh, when I was a lot younger. But I think now, I think it's re- repetitive strain injuries doing just one sport. You know, just have a look. Just engage all sports. Have a go at everything. Do what you can. Do what you enjoy. And, and have fun doing it. So because the most important thing is to it- have fun. Yeah, absolutely. And interestingly, it sounds like you're, you've always had a notion in your head that you will still be fit and active into your 60s, 70s and beyond, mm. right? You, you never got to a point where you thought, well, I'm going to be old then or mm. I'm going to slow down at that time. You know, but you said, you mentioned earlier that you still thought you'd be running around a football field at 50, 60, yeah. kicking yeah. the ball about. So you almost had that belief that it was going to happen. 
and subconsciously your brain kind of goes to work to make it happen because that's what your expectation is right sure. um with with your younger years let's say when you were working because you're retired now right mm. how did that fit into what you were doing because a lot of people will say well hang on a minute how does he get time to do all of this and have a full-time job or you know did you yeah. did you win the football pools at some point do you remember them <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> no, I didn't win. Really, really. um, no, as I said, uh, I done shift work. So there was days when I had it. Um, I was doing working a few days, and then the following week I'd be working a few nights. So I do believe if you if you want to exercise, then you can find the time. Yeah. Even with the busy, busy lifestyles that everybody leads now. Yeah, I, you know, I've got people that train at uh, friends that train at six o'clock in the morning. And then go to a full day's work. So yeah, um, outside uh, pressures and things like that do take effect on people. But I do believe if you want to exercise, you will find the time. Yeah, you will find the time too. And also, it's dependent on what the long term goal is. Because if you're if you're looking at just saying right, well, I need to perform better in a particular sport, mm-hmm. and therefore I'm going to you know sacrifice a lot of other things and focus on this training, then that's that's one thing. But Overall, that doesn't add value to your life because it isolates you from a lot of other things that you should Mm -hmm. really be doing and experiencing. So you end up going to the gym for 20 years for no real gain at the end of it other than the fact that you can still run, you know, a a marathon or whatever else it is. But when you look at using that as your lifestyle so that you stay fit and well, then your approach is very different. So you'll turn around and say, okay, well, today I'm not going to go and do weight training because it's written down on a sheet that that's how I've got to do a session of squats. You might turn around and go, actually, it's a really nice day. I'm going to feel like I want to go out and do some hiking or, you know, some other sort of thing. Go down the park. Nowadays, they've got the, the, lift, the bars that you can swing on and, and, and things like that. So for you, it sounds like it was almost like a subconscious decision to just keep fit and well because that's what you like doing. Yeah, and and I never had this written down schedule or whatever. You know, as you say, I don't have, right, it's not squat day or nothing like that. I just sort of go with the flow and just, okay, yeah, it's it's a nice day. Let's go out for a run. Or if it's actually raining, I enjoy going out in the extreme conditions for a run. So a nice, maybe quite pleasant day wouldn't appeal to me as much in the winter if it was lashing down. I'd go and find a park or some woods to go and run in the mud and have much more fun doing that and getting taking my friends with me and, and, and getting them all muddy and being like a kid again. And, and in the pub, the do, you, do, you, do you find that your your friends are the same sort of age? and that no. they Okay, interesting. Because I was going to ask, are they the same sort of age and do they, do they want to be similar to you? <laughs> And, and no. they, that's why they follow you or, or want to or, or hang out with you, if you like. Or do you find they're all a lot younger? Yeah, all my friends. I don't have you know, anyone really that that uh, I, I sort of hang around with or friends that I would call. Well, my friends, yeah, I don't have anyone that's at my age, no, certainly not. So they're so, all a lot younger or? Certainly, yeah, yeah, they're all in their like, late 20s early 30s through to sort of 40s middle 40s and yeah. up to 50 sort of thing so uh, so which is, i'm assuming yeah. that they come to you a lot of time and say right how do you keep yourself in such good shape what do you do what's the secret yeah. and this kind of thing they're, they're very respectful to me you know we go on holidays together and they sort of look to me to sort of inspire them and i'm only happy to do it and it sort of um i just yeah i just but to me paul like i said it's just quite normal yeah and uh, people say oh yeah you know when are you going to stop doing all this and I go well I, I, I don't know <laughs> yeah why would you why would you if you enjoy it yeah, yeah. why do you think uh, other 60 year olds or 63 year olds are completely different in other words why do you think that people get to that age and are having trouble doing any sort of exercise got some health issues you know, got all yeah. sorts of things going on that a what in, in inverted commas a, a normal sixty-three year old would have. Yeah. Why do you think that happens to the majority of people? I think it's, it, it, it's sort of accept, accepted as you start as you explained earlier on at the beginning of it. You know, most people think when well, they get to fifties or sixties, yeah, you know, I'm done with. You know, my life's finished. Yeah, and actually, I'm having a better quality of life now 
than I did in my twenties. Absolutely. In what way? What way is it better? Because I agree with that statement a hundred percent. Now, today, I have a better quality of life than I ever did when I was younger. And you know, I I can uh, testify to that because I've got a bit more experience in in my head. Yeah. And physically, um, I think, like I said, instead of just looking at one sport, which you know, I'm a bit tunnel vision. I just think I see something. I think, well, well, look. Look at that tree over there. I wonder if I can climb it. So I'll go over and climb it or something like that or see a wall I've got to climb up. Yeah. And what to do when you're kids? You know, you, you see a kid walking along the street, he'll want to climb on that wall. Yeah. He might want to walk along and look on the thing. And that still appeals to me now. And it's nothing special. I just think, why not go back to, you know, doing what you was playing around and enjoying the training like you do when you're a kid? I think a lot of times people can't do it. And they, they don't have the energy to do it. But, and that's yeah. what happens. As they get older, they become you know, less healthy, definitely get a lot less energy. Mm. You know, it, things do creep up on them. And they would love to look at a wall and go, right, I'm going to go and climb that. Mm. But they, I think that just the thought of it makes them want to have a sit down. Yeah, so yeah. what's interesting is that you are, you're still full of energy. You've still got the ability to do those things. What do, you, what do you put it down to? Is it anything specific? Or it's just a case of, look, I've always done it. I don't see why I should stop. Um, I think I wouldn't expect someone who's not exercised, you know, at all to go and climb it. But let's start, if you want to get there, you can get there. But let's start with smaller little um, steps yeah. and build up to that. So, yeah, it's not going to happen overnight. But I would say to someone in their 40s or 50s, um, if you've never exercised before, then let's start. And we start at a lower level. And I'll introduce you to sort of little things like that. And maybe you might like it and you might want to come back. Most people... Uh, like I said, my friends are there when I take, when I take them running and stuff. We go run in the mud or in the winter, in a, in, a, in a wood somewhere, and they'll go around the puddle at first. <laughs> they sit, they'll see a big puddle and they just naturally will run around the puddle. And yeah. I go, whoa, 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 stop. Let's go back. Let's run through that puddle. Oh, no, 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 no. That's going to get all muddy. You're going to get all in my shoes and everything. And I go, yeah, yeah. And then we run through the puddle. And you know what? There's a big smile on their face. Big, big smile on their face. Yeah, yeah. And then after a while, they're looking for the puddles. Yeah. They jump in the puddles, just like a kid. So I think even if someone's not been used to that, you can introduce that back. And you know what? You see a great big smile on their face. Yeah, I bet the, bringing the fun element back into it is hugely, hugely beneficial. Because then, then people see it as a fun thing to do, as opposed to, oh, I've got to go and do the gym or today. Go to the gym. Yeah. yeah. Boring, boring, boring. Yeah. Doing the same thing, same thing. Yeah, that's not how I sort of look at myself or whatever. Interesting. And I'll hopefully I'll sort of try and introduce that to anyone who, who takes an interest in that and have fun. All right, so I'm going to – I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Oh. How? What's your diet like? Yeah, a lot of people ask me that as well. You, I bet you know, they do. You're really strict with your diet. Yeah. And You're going to um, make us all sick now and just say, I'll just eat what I like. Always have done. <laughs> No, no, I, I, I eat what I like, but it's only the food I, I enjoy eating is good. Right. I, I don't eat rubbish or whatever, but it's not because, wow, I really fancy you know, uh, fish and chips and I'm really depriving myself of eating fish and chips. It's not really the food I want to eat. But if I fancy fish and chips, then I would have it. Yeah. But I certainly don't want to eat you know, that three or four times a week or takeaways or burgers or sausages but you know what? If I fancy a portion of chips, Paul, I'll have it. So when did that start? Were you always like that? Yeah, I've always enjoyed sort of eating healthy food. So people say, "How oh, you really uh, disciplined?" Well, no, it's not discipline to me. It's just what I want to eat. Yeah, I know so, exactly what that's like. Yeah, but the thing is, probably, which is a little bit surprising, with all the exercise I do, I probably only eat about fifteen, seventeen hundred calories a day. Interesting. So. Uh, I don't eat massive amounts. I enjoy my food. I'm not a picker, so I don't tend to pick much between meals. But I don't eat massive amounts. And that's, again, not because I'm depriving myself or, of anything. That is just what suits my body. Yeah. And if I eat much more, I could probably put a bit more weight on and be a bit bigger. But you know, it doesn't it doesn't sit with me well. So I, my body tells me what to eat, the amount it eat. It doesn't tell me what to eat. I decide what to eat. But yeah. it tells me the amount I want to eat. And 
for probably 17, 1800 calories a day is what I eat. But um, so, so you just eat your appetite, and then when you're full, you eat, and that and that's it. What would yeah. be a what would be a, like a typical day of of eating for you? Yeah, so I eat quite a lot of carbs, which is probably a little bit unusual. I have massive amount of carbs, but that's probably due to the amount of exercise I do. So I'm not really a breakfast person, but I do sort of think, well, now I need a piece of toast. So I would have a piece of toast with a little bit of jam and honey and a coffee, and then maybe a cup of tea with an odd biscuit, maybe, at maybe 10, 11 o'clock, and then I'll have a sandwich, chicken salad sandwich or some kind of sandwich, really. Um, yeah, mostly chicken, really. I, I tend to eat quite a lot of chicken. So it'd be some ham and some uh, chicken and tomatoes or something like that. And then maybe a cup of tea with a apple or, or, yeah, just make me a cup of tea. And then I'll have an evening meal. And I quite enjoy a big evening meal. So that would be chicken, pasta, potatoes, one of them three, with vegetables and chicken and fish. Right. And that's it. So you're and, making everyone sick now because, again, you turn around and just said, well, I'll just have a bit of toast, have a few biscuits, and I'll do my thing, <laughs> and I'm like 6% body fat, so what are you going to do? <laughs> but I can, I, I can eat one biscuit. I, whenever I pick up a packet, I can have one biscuit out of it. I don't yeah. want to sit there and scoff loads. You know, with a cup of tea, a biscuit's nice, but I don't want to eat six or seven biscuits with a cup of tea, but I'll have one, and I can put the... So has, or, it, has it ever interested you to find out why that is why is it that if you if the next person did exactly the same as you they wouldn't have the same result and they no. certainly wouldn't eat just one biscuit no is that has no. it ever been something you've looked into no no i think it's said it just I'm, I'm happy with that or whatever yeah i'm happy to eat one biscuit and i don't think that like, again must never eat a biscuit well no 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 that's a no yeah you know? I love a biscuit with a cup of tea. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Food is a food as well and meant to be enjoyed as well. So, you know, we're not all professional athletes. If you're a professional athlete, then, yeah, you've got to be a lot, lot stricter and decide. But we do what we do. Food is a pleasure. It should be enjoyed. I like a glass of wine. Yeah. But, you know, I love a glass of wine with a dinner cup. But I won't want to sit and drink wine after I've eaten my dinner. I just see it as an, uh, a part of a meal. But I'm not a big beer drinker, so... Again, you know, in the summer is a hot day. I might have a small beer, but I don't want to keep drinking beers and beers and beers. Yeah, and uh, is that is that because you feel like we're going back to the fish and chips and mm. uh, stuff? Is it because yeah. you feel if you eat them, you you just don't feel well with it? You don't feel great off of it, so you'd rather eat something that makes you feel good. Yeah, and what I enjoy eating, you know, yeah. the pleasure of eating as well. But yeah, I, I, after I've eaten that fish and chips, I think mm, that was. I made it might be months before I had fish and chips or whatever, but yeah. sometimes you think, oh, well, yeah, smell it or something like that. You think, oh, that's, that smells nice, I love it. But So it, it's just generally um, not the food I want to eat that appeals to me. Okay. Um, well, any was, any, any um, health tests or screening that you've had done, or do you get your bloods done re- uh, regularly? Do you ever? Because I'm assuming you never go to the doctor. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but uh, no, 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 no health screening done. Um, the last health screen I had probably was um, actually when I was 60. I got something come through from the National Health or whatever saying you're 60 now, you can have a little free health check or something at the doctor. It yeah. was just a, um, a basic, you know, heart. Um, they, do, um, they do a bloods so and they look at all, their, all the big markers. Yeah, it takes about 10 minutes. So I went there. And uh, yeah, the doctor was like, uh, well, to, you can show me what. Uh, yeah, I'll bet. How do uh, I get to that? Yeah. yeah. So, but no, I don't do no health screening really or that. I should do that. Post- I've done that prostate test, which I think I should. Yeah, I'll probably go to doctors and just a, a prostate check as I'm over 60. Yeah. That a PI or whatever, something like that. Is a PSA tester that you can take it, yeah. your blood. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think I should do that. So I've done that probably about, that must be thinking about it. I should be probably due for another dual test like that. But no, other than that, I don't take no supplements. I don't take any protein shakes or anything. Vitamin tablets, I don't take anything like that. Nothing at all. So basically the secret is have a, a life that you enjoy. Don't get too stressed by the sound of it because it seems mm. like you're quite laid back. Not yeah. really very much stressed. And then do stuff that you want to do, but vary it. Do, do different things. 
Yes, yeah. I mean, that's probably about it, really. Yeah. So it's no secret, and I'm not anything special. All, all, all the people that market the specific diets and the, and the supplements and the training programs and all the rest of it are, are screwing right now because basically you've said you don't need to do any of that. All you've got to do is just enjoy yourself and, and mm. do a bit of what you fancy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly that. And that seems to be my philosophy, really. Brilliant, and, and, yeah, honestly, there's nothing um, scientific about it at all. It's just... Any sim- any uh, goals now that you've got? What, what's your next sort of thing, that, apart from the Barbados half marathon? Yeah, I don't I don't tend to say like five year plans or anything like that. I never seem to have done that really. I just obviously want to stay as healthy as I can. Uh, if I can get up in the morning feeling as I do, then I'm more than happy to carry on uh, what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, as far as goals, I see something advertised like a, a couple of months ago. Uh, my friend pointed out this marathon, so that's I think yeah that's, that's it. But as far as looking much more than probably three or four months or whatever, as far as goals wise, no, I don't have. Um, that much sort of I know something will come up yeah and you'll just latch on to it and go with it because I see that. why so, not a bit of fun yeah, but three or four year plans two, two year plans no I don't, not really not really only apart from hoping right. that I stay healthy um, okay so a, a slightly different type of question now what is now that you're in your 60s mm-hmm. with all the experience you've got regardless of like your exercise and stuff but from a life experience point of view what is the most important thing to you now? Outside of that, just in life. So, what's what for my minute when he gets up in the morning? What is it that is is important to you about life? Yeah, enjoying it, making the most of it, making the most of it because we're here for a very very short time, and we all have these ups and downs in life. It will never always be ups. You're going to get the downs as well, yeah. but enjoy it and, and make every. It sounds a bit cliche, doesn't it? And I don't like to use cliches or whatever, but yeah, if you're not happy with doing something, then change it. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm in a good place at the moment, and I have been for a long, long time now. And it's due to the, my lifestyle, I suppose. Um, so just be happy and content with what you're doing. And if you're not, then maybe do something about it. Change it. Oh. The, the, to a lot of people when they're younger. Certainly, and I know I was the same in my twenties and thirties. Whatever you're, you're thinking. Well, I've got to strive to be what is, what is class as successful in this particular occupation, and I have to have achieved this and that and the other. And you you end up focusing on all this almost irrelevant stuff because you mm. think you need to be a certain thing or way or yeah. level of something, and then you forget to enjoy the stuff on the way, and you turn around. Yeah. And you realise you've you've hit forty and gone. What happened to the last ten years? Mm. Um, and certainly, the older I've got, the less things have become important. Absolutely. And, and the more going out and finding something to enjoy has become more of a focus. And yeah. you know, there are. It's interesting because you've got younger friends. You mm. must see some of them almost killing themselves what? trying to do stuff. Yeah. And you're yeah. sort of obviously, I guess, sitting there saying. Mate, when, you, you're just wasting your time. Chill out. Yeah, I do see that. And it's almost like some type of situations. I'm outside the goldfish bowl and I can see all this going on in the goldfish bowl. Yeah. And probably due to a little bit of experience in my age, I can sort of see it from a different um, viewpoint. And a good example of that was I was going up to London. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, I was at it was rush hour. It was about 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. So I'm standing on the platform. And I'm just watching, people watching. They're in their own little worlds. They do this every single day. So I'm just sort of watching, looking at that, waiting for the train to back five minutes. And suddenly I start to notice a little crowd congregating in one spot on the platform. They're not talking to each other. Yeah. They just stand there in their own world, on their phones and stuff like that. So I'm thinking, what's going on there? Anyway, when the train comes in, that's where the doors open for the train. And I thought... And they just got on. And I thought, you know what, it's got to be something more to life than <laughs> doing that for 48 weeks of the year, striving yeah. for two weeks maybe on a beach somewhere or a slightly bigger house, yeah. you know, another bedroom or whatever. And I thought, wow, that to me was just, it sort of stayed with me for a long time. I'm thinking, surely there's got to be more to life than that. And, and there is, mate. And, and I think, you know, I totally agree with what you're saying. You do need to 
dial things down a bit and start looking at things that make you happy and that you enjoy because all that other stuff that stress and the aggravation and everything else is detrimental in my mind to your quality of life Absolutely. i do think i do think it's important to strive to still be good at certain things that you enjoy or have a purpose i think that's massively yeah. important yeah. but uh, i certainly think as we get older we see things differently and it's really interesting to hear that from you that mm. basically just enjoy yourself yeah, yeah. And obviously, yeah, when you're younger, you've got the financial commitments and stuff like that. So you have to work hard to get, you know, uh, be reasonably successful and provide for your family. Yeah. So I'm not saying to forget that. But, you know, if you do provide for your family and stuff like that, you can also then think, well, you know, but what's the quality of life about? You know, how much am I seeing with my kids? How much am I getting involved with the kids, going to school, doing all them things? Or am I just striving for working longer hours and for, for, for what a new car every year or a slightly bigger house yeah and then to turn around in 20 years and say where's it gone yeah and and who where are my kids and who's mm. the woman sitting across from me because i haven't spoken to her for 20 years exactly. so i've been too busy exactly. yeah absolutely yeah Listen, so, Mike, it's, it's been great to have a have the, well, the time of you today and have a chat um if people want to find out more about you and, and see some of your madness that you get up to um where, where's the best place for them to find your you online say yeah um i've got um instagram account okay and what's the name of that mike m run okay and a facebook michael millen uh mike millen okay so we're going to put those links in the show notes so people can click on there i would highly suggest even if you want to feel that there's hope as we get older you can still be very fit and athletic and look great. Go and have a look at Mike's Instagram because um, every so often another video appears of him hanging off of a bar or doing a uh, one arm press up on a on a on a mountain somewhere or or some craziness that the guy gets up to. And no doubt you'll see something about Barbados later in the year. But um, listen, mate, thank you so much for today. It's been an absolute pleasure, Paul. Absolutely, really, really, really appreciate it. And um, and I hope you get a load more followers on Instagram. Um, and, and you start inspiring even more people to to keep doing what they're doing. I'm not bought into the whole biscuit thing yet. I think if I did that, I'd end up uh, eating the whole packet. But good luck to you, mate. More power to you. That's what I say. Oh, great, Paul. Thanks very much. Oh, and mate. very inspirational person yourself. Thank you. Thanks, mate. All the best. Cheers. Bye. Bye.